June the 23rd, 2022. Um, and before we begin, I'd, I'd like to ask um, our clerk to make an announcement. Thank you, Mayor Story. In accordance with California Senate Bill 361, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting using Zoom or a landline or mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the published meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on our website and on YouTube. As always, the meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Our technician this evening is Walter and he's also joined by, I believe, Eric. So thank you both for being here. Thank you, Mayor Story. Thank you, Chloe. And I also want to extend my thanks to uh, Walter and Eric uh, for being our technicians this evening. Um, and next, let's go to uh, our roll call. Yes. Council Member Bertrand. I'm here. Council Member Brooks. Here. Council Member Brown. Present. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Here. Mayor Story. Here. Thank you. So next, I'd like to ask uh, Council Member Brooks if she'd lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have any um, additions or deletions to the agenda? Staff has no changes this evening. Okay, let's, um, we'll now move on to item three, which is presentations. And this evening, uh, we have a presentation um, to recognize uh, July uh, 2022 as Parks and Recreation Make Life Better Month. Um, and, um, you know, it's my pleasure to um, make this proclamation, and this is a fitting time since uh, you know summer activity is upon us, and our junior guards are are busy on the beach, um, and our parks, and particularly Jade Street Park, is filled with uh, um, <laughs> players, uh, softball players, and basketball players, and uh, um, as well as Monterey Park, um, and. Um, so um, to make this proclamation, I, I want to recognize that uh, um, that the Parks and Recreational um, Department or for the City of Capitola uh, creates experiences for youth sports and enrichment activities, um, uh, teen centers and programs, um, which um, help vitalize um, uh, our community um, and the our city of capitola recreation department is dedicated to promoting physical emotional and mental health and wellness for all those uh, programs designed around fitness creativity play and activity um you know the, our parks are, are an important and integral part of our community uh, by enriching our connections with one another um, and with nature uh, the uh, Parks and Recreational Department fosters social cohesiveness in, in our community. Um,
So rec department offers an after school rec club uh, for students uh, who attend Main Street, Soquel Elementary and New Brighton. Um, and those are from the first grade through middle school are able to enroll in that program. Um, the Parks and Rec strengthens our community identity, providing facilities such as our J Street Park um, Community Center. Um, they uh, support um, uh, recreational activities, which make our lives better uh, in many ways. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that the um, recreational department has uh, 51 um, instructors and staff who uh, offer nearly 100 different classes and other programming, uh, including uh, the um, Camp Capitola, Junior Guards, uh, all the uh, classes and events and rentals um, and uh, sports uh, equipment. Um, the California Parks and Recs uh, has released a statewide public awareness campaign called uh, Parks Make Life Better. Um, registered trademark uh, and inform citizens of the many benefits of utilizing parts facilities and programs. And therefore, I, Sam Story, um, as the mayor of the city of Capitola, here, do, here now do proclaim um, July 2022 as Parks and Recreational Make Life Better Month and encourage all citizens of the city of Capitola to join me in this observance. Thank you. Is um, Nikki, did you want to um, say a few words um, about yes. of our parks department? Hi. Yes, thank you, yes. Mayor Story. You're very um, welcome, my, my honor to do that. Yes, thank you very much. Good evening, uh, Council. So um, thank you very much for the proclamation. As a park and recreation professional, I'm excited to um, share with you uh, the activities that um, residents can expect. Um, so we have on July 1st, uh, we're gonna have a community kickball. Um, so anybody is welcome, bring family all ages to Jade Street Park at 5 p.m. and we will organize just a fun recreational kickball game. Uh, we also are offering on July 6th a family swim for junior guard families or any other families that are interested in coming and swimming around the wharf. Um, we're going to have that activity. And I believe that the Team Tola Parents Club is also going to help organize a few um, activities on the beach before that as well. Uh, on July 15th, we will have a food truck event in Monterey Park. Those operate from 4.30 to 7.30. Um, so please come out and enjoy that if you are available. And then there are lots of residents um, that might be interested in classes, but they're not quite ready to commit to series. And so for the week, the third week of July, which is July 17th through the 23rd, um, we're offering try it classes. So these are one time classes that if you're interested in just trying it out, maybe you've seen it in the catalog and you want to learn a little bit more about it without the full commitment. This is that opportunity. So please check out our website and our catalog for any try it classes. And then finally, um, we are in part of the county wide partnership with other parks and recreation agencies to help host the Family Fun Day event. And this uh, July, it is happening on Saturday, July 30th at Ramsey's Park in Watsonville. Um, like I said, this is a countywide collective, so you'll find all parks and recreation agencies at this event. Everybody is welcome. Please go out, find your park, um, find any in, in any of our other county or other cities in our county also have lots of events that are available for community members. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nikki. It sounds like a lot of fun activities planned for this summer. Um, I particularly like the community kickball uh, idea. I don't think I've played kickball since I was in grade school. Maybe I can 
get the council members to form a team if that doesn't violate the Brown Act in some way. Um, and the, the triad classes, I, that's a wonderful idea to get people out uh, who maybe aren't ready to commit, but just wanna um, check things out and see how it feels. Um, so thank you for all that. I just wanted to check, do uh, other council members um, have any comments? Yeah, council member Bertrand. Well, I remember my favorite sport in high in grammar school was dodgeball. So <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing that. Of course, I always got hit a lot, but um, I don't know why they always threw the ball at me. But anyway, maybe uh, softball and dodgeball next year. <laughs> okay, any other um, comments or questions from council members? Seeing none, I'm gonna now move on to item four, which is, um, um, uh, Rick, uh, about um, uh, any additional materials uh, for this evening's meeting. Yes, Mayor Story, one additional material was received regarding item 8C, the potential second home tax. Okay, all right, thank you for that. Um, Next is um, oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the council on items that are not on tonight's agenda or items that are on tonight's consent agenda. If you would like to um, uh, make a public comment, you can raise your hand in Zoom uh, or dial star nine. Uh, the moderator will give you up to three minutes to speak. You can also send an email to public comments at ci.capitola.ca.us. And I, I see one hand up, Larry. Maybe we could. Uh... Okay. Um, can you can you hear me, Mr. Stott? Uh, yes. Oh. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah, very well. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I live on Diamond Street, and I, I've been taking exception to the parking situation. We've had a, a lost some um, parking spaces here. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> oh my goodness, the, the screen changed. Well, I'll keep talking anyway. Uh, initially in January, uh, the parking enforcement came through and issued tickets saying they couldn't park the way they were in the last 25, 30 years or so, which is nose in, which works well in the areas that were designed for it. I thought that this at the time was maybe a like a fraternity prank pulled on the parking cadets, who, by the way, were pretty good. They were polite and firm and so forth. Uh, we were told to go out and issue silly tickets. But no, it turned, and then I thought maybe they're trying to raise money. That no, that's not it. Finally, it took a long time after talking to Chief Daly and talking to Jacques that uh, <clears throat> there's a problem over on Ruby Court. Ruby Court had problems with nose in parking, and they really did have a problem because it's narrower. The Ruby Court is 32 feet wide, and the uh, <clears throat> the the part that's the street, and then the cul-de-sac area is, is uh, only 71 feet. Also, they have problems with people coming over, employees coming over from businesses on 41st Avenue, uh, encouraged by their employers to park there instead of in the parking lot in the business in order to leave more room for the customers. So Ruby Court is jammed. And anybody who comes into Ruby Court who lives there or parks there, they have to, they have to try to negotiate the cul-de-sac at the end. There's just no way around it. And if there's some of these big vehement vehicles parked up in there with the rear end sticking out. It's hard. I can see why they would do that. Okay. No nose in parking for Ruby court. No problem with that. However, when I talked talk to chief Valley, he thought that if they had those in restricted nose in parking for Ruby court, then they would also have to restrict it for diamond street. Diamond street is a completely different street. It's, it's not a cul-de-sac. It comes on through, it winds on out. And these cut out areas are so big that down in the Southern end, 
you can park two or three dump trucks in there and it knows in and it still would not affect anything on the street. So what I'd like to point out is that what happens in Ruby Court stays in Ruby Court. <clears throat> it shouldn't be affecting Diamond Street. So what I have done, uh, I was told by both Jacques, you suggested that I get a group going and talk to the HOA. Sarah Ryan <clears throat> suggested I talk to the HOA. I tried three times as well as uh, trying to communicate with them, just like we're communicating now. And also, uh, Chief Daly thought I should form some kind of a thing. Well, I'm not a real sociable person. And going, the idea of going around and trying to organize people just seemed like a bad idea. But I did it. <clears throat> so far, I've got a petition going, 30 signatures to gain back our parking spaces on Diamond Street. And there's a couple of gentlemen down at the other end of the street who are also circulating the positions. The petition. So we're going to get this done. We're going to have this happening. Now, what I would ask of you is to simply. Yeah, Mr. Scott, I just, um, uh, I'm going to give you um, one more minute, okay, to sum up um, since your three minutes are up. So. Okay, I can do this in one minute. What I'm asking is just reconsideration of this restriction on Diamond Street because. Because it's hap because there's a problem in Ruby Court, Ruby Court is not our problem. It's Ruby Court's problem. They have my sympathy. And so I tend to mail you a package, everybody on the council, Chief Daly, <clears throat> um, Sarah Ryan, the engineer that has satellite photos of all of these things concerned with the measurements of the streets, uh, the uh, a couple of pages of commentary and then copies of all of the petition signers. And I hope they'll get there in a few days and I please hope that you consider them. Thank you. All right, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Stotts. Um, and uh, particularly for bringing uh, that issue to our attention uh, and for your advocacy. Um, I can assure you when we receive your packet of materials, uh, that each of the council members will uh, review it and seriously consider it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, are there any other um, attendees that would like to speak in public comment? Yes, hello. Uh, thank you for hearing my comment. I just wanted to note that um, I'm really missing the decorations along Capitola median and wondering um, when that's going to be taken up by the council in terms of bringing them back. I think during this time of pandemic and the last couple of years, those uh, decorations for all the different events all year long brought joy to people as they were driving by and uh, I think it would be a nice thing for them to come back. Thank you for listening to me. All right, thank you, Ms. Walsh, for uh, making that request, bringing that to our attention. Um, and I can assure you we will uh, uh, look into that uh, with staff um, and have a response for you. Um, are there any other comments? Okay. See none. Um, I'm going to now move on to um, other staff and city council comments. Let's start with staff comments. Staff has no comments for this evening. Okay. Council members have comments. Seeing none, um, I would just like to um, um, you know, report back on um, the first Twilight concert, um, which happened on uh, June the 15th. Um, and it was a well-attended event. And But um, 
what I just wanted to report out about, and one thing I noticed, and which is actually very wonderful, were um, the numbers of people who rode their bicycles and their electric bicycles down to the concert and the Esplanade. Um, and um, there were bicycles, you know, just parked everywhere. Um, they were um, all around the, the showers um, and as well around the large palm tree. They were parked all around that. Um, and I, I think I raised that point because um, uh, I, I think it is going to be, um, I think, something that we should keep our eye on um, and that we should think about providing bike parking infrastructure um, um, on the Esplanade. Um, and, and so to accommodate uh, all those bicycles and which would encourage more people uh, to ride their bicycles um, uh, down there. Um, I know that there are plans with the parklets um, for some bike parking, but um, I'm not sure if um, those would be sufficient, but I just wanted to bring that to, you know, I think staff and council's attention um, just to watch that as that kind of, I anticipate will grow and evolve um, as the bicycles and particularly electric bicycles become more popular. So that's that's um, my comment for the evening. Um, next we'll come to the consent uh, items. Um, these are items that will be um, handled in one vote unless the council member uh, wishes to pull an item for clarification or um, further discussion. Is there a request to pull a consent agenda item? Yes, council member Bertrand. Um, may I make a comment about one of the items? But not pull it. Um, yeah, if it's if it's fairly, um, I think quick. Why don't you go ahead and make a comment, and we won't uh, separately uh, agendize it. Thank you very much. So I was reading the BIA report, and I just want to comment on the fact that the uh, BIA is uh, working with the city, probably uh, streets department, and um, you know for beautification, cleanup, and stuff like that. So I, I commend the BIA for. <laughs> Thank you for that um, cooperation with the city. Thank you. Okay, are there any other um, uh, requests to pull a consent agenda item? If not, I'll entertain a motion uh, on the consent calendar. I'll move approval of consent. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by council member Brown and a second by council member Tran. Um, May we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And this Thank you. consent calendar passes unanimously which will bring us to the general government public hearings for this evening. Um, uh, Council member Bertrand, did you still have your hand up or? Sorry, I was scrolling on the agenda and I made a comment that I should not have made. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I just uh, realized I was. Yeah, I, I recognize that, but I was just gonna let it go by. Okay. I, 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 I just. Can, what am I talking about? It's not even discussed yet. You can you, you can maybe mention it again later. Um, yes, Jamie. Before we move on to item 8A, I noticed that the, the BIA representatives are not on the call at this time. So I just want to toss out that you may want to reorder uh, item 8A and take it later in the evening and maybe start with 8B. Council's discretion though. Um, on that, um, are we expecting uh, representatives from the BIA to be in attendance? Did they uh, let you know that they were going to be here? My understanding is we do, but I, I, our finance director is on the call and he can chime in. 
Okay, is there um, uh, yeah, the, uh, our, is, Oh, go ahead. No, yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Our senior accountant, Mark Sullivan, has been in communication with them through the whole process. Um, I'm guessing that they just forgot it was a six o'clock start time. But they're traditionally they're here and available for questions. Um, let's see, is there, um, going back to, is there uh, maybe a motion by the council to um, defer this item uh, till later in the uh, agenda? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to defer the item later in the agenda so that we can ensure that the BIA representatives are, are present and able to make comment. I agree. Okay, we have a motion and second to move this item. Um, since um, I'm gonna maybe move it uh, just before the current item D. Let's see if we'll revisit it at that time. Next we have, uh, then we'll move on to item B, which is the Coastal Commission recommendations, uh, recommended modifications to Capitola's outdoor dining uh, ordinance. The recommended action is to adopt a resolution accepting the California Coastal Commission's modifications to repeal and replace Capitola Municipal Code section 17.96.170 outdoor dining in public right away and amend municipal code section 17.44.150 b3 and 17.120.030 we have a staff report please yes let me jump in i have to recuse myself uh, due to my uh, employment at paradise beach grill i'll be back Okay, uh, good evening, Mayor Story and Council. Um, tonight I have a presentation on the certification of our outdoor dining ordinance. Um, so prior to any um, zoning code or LCP um, section of code taking effect, the Coastal Commission is required to certify our ordinances. And tonight that is the focus of the presentation. I'm just going to quickly go over the history um, back in the spring of 2020, the city council adopted an emergency temporary outdoor use permits due to the pandemic. In and one year later, in April, the city council directed staff to develop a permanent outdoor dining program. So since that time, we've been working towards our, our permanent outdoor dining program. Um, Planning Commission review and recommendation ha happened in October and November of 2021. Um, their recommendation was to slow down and maybe do the prototype first and then move forward with the ordinance. Um, in December of 2021, we gave two options to the City Council. City Council directed us to move forward with the ordinance and at the same time move forward with our prototype design, um, which we're, we've been working through. Um, in January of 2020, I submitted our LCP amendment to the Coastal Commission, and we worked closely with their staff for months. And um, in June, a couple weeks back, the Coastal Commission provided a conditional certification. So they put conditions on our ordinance that they would like to see incorporated into the ordinance. Um, just a quick overview of the um, program components. We have a uh, maximum number of parking spaces. As Mayor Story just mentioned, we also have two required bicycle parking spaces, sound requirements, signs, materials, activation requirements, stormwater, utilities, maintenance. We have uh, specific locations for sidewalk dining and street dining. And then we also have an administrative policy, which really outlines the city's oversight of these spaces as it is city property being leased um, to the businesses. And I'm happy to go back and answer any questions about this later, but I didn't want to go through every aspect of the ordinance at this point, because it's probably the fourth time you've seen, or, or more that you've seen these presentations. So um, today we're really focused on the Coastal Commission modifications. Their staff asked for two modifications. The first, which aligns with um, what the city council had asked for originally. The city council, we wanted to do the first leases for three years. 
um, and then check in and review how the program's going, make sure we don't need to amend it. When it got, we, we didn't put anything specific in our ordinance about that. It was in our policy document. When it got to the Coastal Commission, they asked that we put this um, in our ordinance and then require that review to happen on a five-year basis thereafter. So we'll be coming to the city council after three years of the program being in place and we'll be doing a review of the entire program. So every restaurant that's been issued, that gets issued one of these permits, um, we'll, we'll give you an update on who's been in compliance, if there's any issues. The Coastal Commission is very interested to make sure that there's no impacts to our coastal resources um, and access. So we'll be reviewing that as well. And then once we give the city council the update, they'll have the option to either recertify um, amend or revoke the CDP, or they can um, revoke the entire program at that point if, if, if it's been problematic. Um, and then, uh, so that that really aligns with, I think, where the city council had directed us originally. And second, they asked, we, we went through a back and forth. Um, at first, they you'll recall that we had a 50% dedication of the lease revenue that would go towards coastal access. When we first submitted our LCP update, they asked us to switch that to 100%. So all of the fees that are collected for parking, they wanted to have go towards coastal access. Um, in your staff report as an attachment, I provided a summary of all the, you know, our, our city goes above and beyond when it comes to coastal access and recreation. And they, when they saw our list of everything we're doing, our great recreation program, our lifeguards, um, our future wharf update, um, they said, you know what, you're right. You guys are doing a great job. We're not gonna have oversight in, in an area that we don't need to. And so they actually redlined that 50% dedication out. So I think that was a big win for the city. Um, so we're, what happens after tonight? So tonight, if you adopt the two modifications that are um, suggested by the Coastal Commission. Um, on Monday, I'll launch the lottery for the spaces. We had put in our administrative policy that the, lot, the lottery would be available for 45 days. Um, and I just, we've been working internally on a document, a letter that will go out to all of the restaurants in the city, and that would go out on Monday. Um, and it, it, provides an overview of the lottery system. It has a, an attachment of frequently asked questions. There's a lot of details in this next step that we want to make sure the restaurants are really clear um, about timing and all the details of what it means to lease, what types of permits are required. So we're really, we're going to get out ahead of it. I'll get that out to all of you as well. So you have a copy. Um, so we'll launch the lottery next Monday. Um, the Coastal Commission concurrence meeting. So after this meeting, if we agree with if the city council says to move forward with their changes um, the concurrence there's one more meeting at coastal commission where they make it final it becomes our certified lcp that'll happen on july 15th um, following that there's a meeting for the planning commission on july 21st when they'll review the prototype street dining deck designs and hoping we get an approval that night so that the businesses can make a decision on whether or not they want to use the prototype designs. Um, we did have a meeting with the businesses recently and got feedback and our um, the designer is incorporating some of the, the feedback from the businesses that we got. So next, the lottery will occur on August 16th. That's 45 days later. Um, the Art and Wine Festival, that's the, the last big festival for, this, for the season is September 10th and 11th. So our outdoor dining, uh, we were directed by the city council to expire the temporary outdoor dining 60 days after Coastal Commission certification. So that would occur on September 15th. It's two months after the Coastal Commission concurrence meeting. And then we would go ahead and start issuing CDPs. So for the outdoor dining. And what I've also put in this document that's going to go out to the city is we're We've been working through how do we make sure that the businesses, you know, the businesses that don't want to move forward with a permanent um, in the permanent program will have them remove all of that their um, outdoor dining by September 15th. 
anyone that's like paid their deposit, they got their space in the lottery, and they also have plans into the city at that point uh, on September 15th, we're going to work with those restaurants to allow them to keep their temporary in place as long as they're working towards their permanent until such time that they um, get their um, their building permit and then they can take out the temporary and start to do their construction so um so we're that's all in the guidance document so our recommended action tonight is to adopt a resolution accepting the california coastal commission modifications to repeal and replace capitola muni code section 17.96170 outdoor dining in the public right away and amend muni code section 17.44150 b3 and 17120.030. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Council Member Brown. Thank you. I noticed uh, in the ordinance uh, on page 51, there was discussion about the dining deck materials being high quality and durable. And I think that's uh, great guidance. I had some residents reach out with some concerns about some of the guidelines that they thought were going to be in place regarding the furniture, that perhaps it would only be one kind of umbrella or one kind of chair um, that the outdoor dining decks would be able to have. And there was concern that uh, one, it would be cost prohibitive, prohibitive for some of the um, business owners, but then also that it kind of prevents the opportunity for there to be character for, for each of the um, restaurants taking part of this. And so I didn't see anything about it in the ordinance, and I know this comes back to Planning Commission. So I'm just wondering if that's something that the Planning Commission is going to continue to provide guidance on, um, or if that's something that hasn't really been finalized yet. So um, the with, within the prototype design, it has not been finalized. So that is one of the suggestions within the prototype design that certain a certain type of like outdoor chair. Uh, not necessarily one specific design, but there's many options, but utilizing a high quality furniture. But they, um, so the Planning Commission will be looking at that in July for the prototype design and considering it. Um, in terms of the custom designs, the Planning Commission will look at the whole design. So they'll look at when, they, when somebody comes in with their custom design, they'll look at the furniture, they'll look at the umbrellas, they'll look at the whole package to ensure that um, it meets that requirement. So the requirement is, loose enough that you know there's definitely design freedom there in order for them to bring forward their what they'd like and i can bring that up at the planning commission meeting the that that was mentioned during this meeting and um and i agree with you that options more options are better so in terms of okay helping so the if I'm understanding correctly, then it sounds like someone could use the prototype design and the prototype design would include specific furniture that you would need to use if you just want this administ administrative um, permit that's just done. You're going to use this design. It's approved. If they wanted to use the prototype deck, but a different kind of furniture than is included in the prototype design, then it would be considered kind of a custom. Um, and then they, that just needs to be approved separately. It doesn't mean you can't have that that kind of Furnish, furnishings, it just means you have to have that approved separately. Am I understanding that correctly? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Council Member Bertrand. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, yeah, I'll just chime in on the, the, the furniture comment. So I had a comment or two on, um, well, we've already purchased the furniture. They didn't want to repurchase furniture. So uh, with the clarification of Commissioner Brown, uh, excuse me, Councilperson Brown, then that should be attended at that time. Um, so, Ms. Hurley, um, you mentioned that you've met with the um, the merchants and a couple of comments I've had is about the costs. Has that been nailed down? And what was their general response? You said they gave suggestions, which means they're probably thinking about it and they're not against it. So I'm just trying to get an idea what they think generally if you want to characterize that. Yeah, um, we got quite a few comments actually about the furniture and the umbrellas. And um, the other comment that um, there, I have a list of comments and I'm sorry, they're not, they weren't in my presentation this evening, but um, one comment in particular was just trying to maximize the space. Um, there were some new design ideas of rather than have planters all along the edge with railings, why not put places where people can sit and look out and have almost like a, a higher bar area 
that to to just get more spaces within the in these parking spaces. So um, I will bring forward the whole list of comments from that design meeting to the Planning Commission when they're reviewing the prototype design. But that that will be decided at that meeting. And um, but there one one of the biggest uh, the 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 comment we heard the most was about the furniture um, and the estimated cost, I believe, for two spaces to build it out with estimated cost is about twenty five thousand dollars. It's expensive, but it's uh, a long term investment. So I, I have those numbers and I'd be happy to share those with the council and send them out. Thank you. Any other questions from council members? See none, um, Katie. I, I had a question about the bicycle parking. Um, bicycles are mm -hmm. on my mind. Um, are those um, spaces per parklet? Though, are those going to be reserved and limited for customers of the establishment? Or are they open to the public to be able? To you know, there's um, no, I think they're open to the public. It's really supposed to offset the public parking space. Uh -huh. So it's, it will not be just, and from my understanding, we didn't put anything in the ordinance that says it's just for those businesses. It's really to help um, mitigate the impact of removing public parking from our streets. Yeah, I just, I mean, in reading the section on the bicycle, it was, it was to me kind of unclear one way or the other within the ordinance. Um, it does say that the street dining deck that eliminates an on street parking space must include a bicycle parking rack integrated into the street dining deck design. Um, or it says within the private property of the eating or drinking establishment. It kind of sounds makes it sounds it could be proprietary um, instead of just open to the public. Would it be better to, if if our expectation is that it is going to be available to the public, just maybe mention that in the ordinance? You know, at, at this point, we can't really make any modifications to the ordinance. But if we need to, um, we could put something within our um, policy and bring it back to the council. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that that would be good to just clarify that because um, I anticipate um, those kinds of issues may come up um, down there. I think starting out may be good to just be clear with everyone. Um, so um, let's see, Jamie, you had your hand up. Yes, I was just going to note that each one of these parklets is going to get a revocable encroachment permit. And the revocable encroachment permit is going to include a lot of sort of standard language about they're doing this in the public right of way. This is what they can do. This is what they can't do. Yeah. So I think we can easily capture that there, that bike parking on your site is public and you can't restrict people's use to it. Um, so hopefully that can clear that up. And because I do agree, if it's not clear, it can lead to confusion, which can lead to conflict. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. That, that, that sounds like a good um, um, solution. Um, seeing no other questions on the staff report, um, I'll, um, I'll go to the public, see if any members of the public um, wish to address this item. Uh, if you do, raise your hand in the Zoom application or dial star nine. Um, the moderator will give you three minutes to speak, um, or you may send an email uh, to public comments at ci.capicola.ca.us. Okay, well, let's move on. Larry, let me know if anything should come in, Larry. So um, uh, with that, I'll bring it back to the council for further deliberation and action. Um, and um, I see council member Brown. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution accepting the California Coastal Commission modifications to repeal and replace Capitola Municipal Code section as listed on the screen. 
uh, in the public right of way and amend the municipal codes also as listed uh, here on the screen. Second. There, there's, there's a motion by Council Member Brown, second by Council Member Bertrand. Uh, before I call for a roll call vote, um, I just, just want to, uh, um, I think, extend my congratulations to staff to, with for negotiating this uh, with the Coastal Commission um, and, and really um, uh, doing that successfully. Uh, I think the outcome uh, is, is very reasonable uh, on the part of the Coastal Commission. Um, and so uh, thank you for that good work and uh, bringing the Coastal Commission around to our thinking. Um, with that, uh, oh, Council Member Brooks. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to add a quick comment. Um, great jobs to, to staff, but in addition, Katie, I was just in Los Gatos and they are laying the foundation for many of these parklets or spots. And um, I, I just think it would be a good time if any of the council members wanted to make a quick trip, not on the weekend in traffic, but to kind of see these things go up and um, what they look like, because it's pretty phenomenal. So um, kudos to staff. Thank you for all the hard, hard work. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, so with that, I'm going to call for a roll call vote on the motion. Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. She was recused. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. And Mayor Story. Hi. Uh, the motion passes unanimously by those council members that are able to vote on it. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, I think we all look forward to moving ahead uh, with our permanent parklet program. Uh, now let's go on to the item uh, 8C. Uh, which is the potential second home tax follow-up. Um, the recommended action is to provide direction to staff, either one, continue preparing the materials necessary to place a second home tax on the November 2022 ballot, or two, do not proceed with placing a second home tax on the November 2022 ballot. Can we uh, have a staff report, please? Sure, give me a second to share my screen. How does that look, Mr. Moderator? Great. Okay, so we're back in front of you to talk a little bit about this potential second home tax. Council will recall that on May 23rd, we received polling results showing community sentiments about a second home tax. While the results from the polling showed a plurality, over 50% support for a second home tax, that support tended to wane as additional information was presented to potential voters. In addition, we've learned that a second home tax that was placed on the ballot by the city council would require two thirds to pass. So as we discussed last time, two thirds report, uh, support is a very challenging bar to meet for any measure. And Given the polling results, it would require a very strong campaign to have um, have any chance of passage. So at our meeting then on June 9th, we held a follow-up where we got some direction from the council. And in addition, we provided some additional info, input about some different types of questions the council members had. And at the con conclusion of the meeting, council did three things. Provided direction to proceed with drafting an ordinance and incorporated some specific details of what would go into the ordinance. Um, Council uh, also included in the motion that members, as allowed by the Brown Act, would uh, assess community support, um, potentially looking into an outreach plan and analyzing uh, also whether or not there may be a community campaign for such a tax measure. And then also Council asked for this to come back this evening here two weeks later. Uh, as a summary for the direction received at the meeting, um, the threshold for the tax uh, was to be people who occupied their homes less than 90 days a year would be subject to it. The tax amount was set a bit lower uh, at the $4,000 um, level. And then we went through a bit of an enforcement protocol and exemptions, which the council identified that would be included in the draft ordinance the city attorney is working on. Uh, the uses we haven't yet 
determined. So we will touch on that in a second here. So if we were to decide to move forward, uh, staff would need direction on the proposed uses. Uh, as I mentioned two weeks ago, uh, my suggestion would be that we look for uses that are either identified in the polling or there's a lot of community interest in, things that would really engender sort of support for the item and maybe split that between some general fund uses. Uh, the options, should we decide to move forward, would be we could get direction on uses this evening. Council could call a special meeting uh, in mid-June to discuss further. Council could consider forming a subcommittee to recommend uses for a second home tax. Or lastly, you could provide that direction at the July 23rd, 28th meeting. If we decide not to move forward this evening, then we would just need the direction to discontinue working on this potential tax measure at this time. So with that, this is the recommendation as identified by the mayor at the outset, and I'm available to answer any questions. Seeing no questions from council members, um, I will um, take this matter out to the public and um, see if any attendees would like to uh, speak on this agenda item. If so, raise your hand in the Zoom application or you can dial star nine. The moderator will give you three minutes to speak. Uh, you may also send an email to public comments at ci.capitola.ca.us. Okay. Yeah, let me know if anything should come in, um, Larry. Um, so it looks like um, Council Member Bertrand, you had your hand up. I'll bring it back to Council for further deliberation and action. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to move forward, but um, some of the things we did talk about was reaching out to um, some of the stakeholders, and you know we did get a message from a uh, realty or um, a commission, um, a group of realtors. You know that's one stakeholder, but there's other stakeholders too. Um, so that was some of the things we talked about last time, and I'm not sure we've done a great effort in that regard. Um, at least my participation hasn't been that great. Um, so I'm not sure what others did, but I think it should be a co um, consistent, you know, coherent effort uh, from the city. And I think some of the discussion we had last time was that if this was to be successful, sort of like our other general revenue um, measures in the past, you know, we identified real needs for the city, things that would resonate with uh, the people who live here, address real needs. Um, the survey that was done does address that to some extent, but I don't know if it is broad enough to, you know, really meet all the things that maybe would, you know, be very uh, useful to make this measure successful. So I just like to put out those two things. Um, I think we should do more effort to reach out to our stakeholders, do that in a um, organized way and do more effort, maybe a, um, a subcommittee, which is a good idea. We did have some suggestions about that last time, which didn't seem to go over, but I think um, that is still a good idea to try to come up with some really good suggestions for the purpose of this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Before I continue with um, council deliberation, I do see there's a hand up in the Zoom application. I'm going to go back to the public and see if the hand up is on this second home tax item. Yes. Hi, John D. Can you hear us? Okay, I've unmuted. And I wanted to say that I talked with, um, well, it's only one resident uh, over at the Capitola Library, and that resident told me she hadn't heard anything about a second uh, home tax. And she was wondering what would the money be spent on? 
um, you know, she wanted to see the list of what it was. And she also said, gosh, I've lived in Capitola quite a while and the city used to be able to balance its budget. So is it that the expenses are greater or the revenues are less? She wanted to understand that. So that's my comment. All right, thank you, John D. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this item? Okay, I'm going to uh, now come back to the council then um, and recognize Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you. Um, so I, after our last meeting, did meet with a few of our community members, um, also members of our finance, financial committee, um, and sort of spitballed some ideas along with staff members too. And I think um, while I want to support the ballot measure, I think that how under the gun we are, it's going to be something that would take a little bit more initiative from either community members, um, possibly some more campaigning, um, definitely some um, more outreach to the public. I'd like the public, you know, kind of as Joni was saying that you know, she's hearing from people that people aren't aware of what what it's for, what it's going to contribute to. So I think that trying to squeeze it into the November ballot might be a little bit um, unattainable for us right now. But I think that moving forward, um, it's something that we should still address and have staff and in our community moving forward uh, towards getting it on the next presidential um, election ballot. Council Member Brooks. Thank you, Mayor Story. Um, so yeah, I think that the obstacles are real and in looking at a potential, this potential ballot measure going on the November, this November ballot. Um, I, I know that several other cities are currently looking at that and that our um our legal can use some of those outcomes in the next year uh and from these cities to to help us gauge whether this is um is feasible for our city and that it's um, that we're set up for uh, in regards to any potential litigation. Those are, that was one thing I mentioned before about, you know, what would, would council A be able to afford this and what would that look like? What does the appeals process look like for us? So a lot of um, obstacles that are in our way, but not to say that it's not attainable, um, wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I think there's still opportunity here. So tonight I'm not ready to move this forward on the uh, to the November ballot. I'd like to see some community um, engagement on this in the in the next year for the 24 uh, presidential ballot. If in if in fact that the other measures do well, um, I think I heard San Francisco's doing it. We'll see what the outcome in Santa Cruz um, how that goes. Um, and so forth. And so we can revisit this in, in a year or so to see whether this is something that would work for our, our city. And those are my comments. Thank you, Council Member Brown. Thank you, Mayor Story. I think, um, you know, my thoughts on this echo a lot of what my fellow council members have already said. I think this is something that as a city we would would benefit from moving forward with. I do have concerns with moving forward with it on the November ballot, especially seeing the kind of voter turnout we saw in the primaries this year. I agree with, with some of the previous comments that perhaps in a presidential election year, we'd have a higher uh, voter turnout, which would also benefit us in terms of our kind of ballot measures. Um, additionally, I think if we're gonna be putting this on the ballot in November of 2024, we would probably wanna start doing um, outreach, any additional polling, um, and considerations of what an ordinance might look like in summer of 23, because to uh, the point of some of the other comments that were made, I think we just started talking about this in May and we would have had to have an ordinance ready essentially now. And so that only gave us 30 days to really pull this all together. And I know that we did the polling, of course, and that was beneficial to have that information. 
Um, but I'm concerned that we're not going to get to the two thirds uh, threshold to get this passed in November. And so I uh, agree with others that now this year is, is not the time for this ballot measure, but I look forward to being a part of supporting it should we choose to put it on the ballot in November of 24. Council member Bertrand. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think everyone's mentioned a, a lot of things that would not <laughs> bode well for a successful campaign. Uh, so my question of staff is, uh, can we um, move forward with a suggested, uh, uh, develop, excuse me, a suggested ordinance, uh, not for November, but something that we could use when we're talking about this to the community. And, you know, I think Yvette mentioned that there's other uh, cities and communities that are considering this and Sam, our, our, our um, attorney, could take those things into account so that um, we do avoid litigation or possible efforts to slow it down. So that's my suggestion. And, and you know, so not for this November, but for later. And we basically develop something that we could actually have that would address what we're trying to um, accomplish, at least in terms of the legal. I'm happy, <laughs> Council Member Bertrand. I'm sorry if there's an echo here. I do know of a couple of cities like uh, Council Member Brooks mentioned are looking to put a measure on the ballot. I knew Santa Cruz, some residents put a measure on the ballot. I've been in close contact with Jamie about this. We'll keep talking and certainly my office is watching these measures that are going on the ballot. Um, and so we're assessing in the next few months and I can work with Jamie about um, pushing that information out to the council. Yes, Sam, I think your guidance would be very helpful in this. Um, thank you very much. Um, another thing, if I may, Mayor. Um, so, Sam, your law office will be dealing with the legal issues, but if there's anything that comes about that we would like to know in terms of our discussion about, you know, some of the, um, the resonance with the community, some of the issues that were more... Our issues are going to be different, but I'm, I'm just sort of trying to get an idea of what their experience is also, because it is a tax and it does have to meet a real need. Thank you. All right, thank you. It, it um, seems the sentiment of the council is to uh, select a second option, which is do not proceed. Uh, with placing a second home tax on the November 2022 ballot. Is there someone that wants to make a motion to that effect? I'd like make to make a motion to not proceed with this ballot measure on this November ballot. There's a motion. Is there a second to that motion? No second. Okay, there's a motion by Council Member Brooks and seconded by Council Member Bertrand not to place the second home tax uh, on the November 2022 ballot. Um, is there any final words by council members before I call for a roll call vote? Seeing none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Council member Bertrand. I agree. Council member Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Is that Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Um, now, I wanted to check in and see if their representatives for the BIA are um, in attendance. Devin's here. Yes, Mayor. Uh, Devin Salter, who put the budget together for the BIA, is attending the meeting. Great, great. Okay, so we're going to now go back to item A. Um, and um, I, I just want to um, uh, announce that um, I have a conflict since um, I am a subject uh, to the assessment by the BIA. Um, therefore, I'm on both sides of this um, um, arrangement. So I am going to recuse and step away from this meeting and turn it over to Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so we are 
moving back up to item A, which is consider a resolution for the levy of Capitola Village and work business improvement area assessments for fiscal year 2022 to 2023. The recommended action here is to conduct the notice public hearing and adopt the proposed resolution levying the fiscal year 2022-23 Capitola Village and Work Business Improvement Area assessments and accepting the CBWBIA annual plan and budget. And Jim, is this your presentation? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me share my screen and I'll go through a couple of slides here. Does that look okay, moderator? Thank you. Uh, so just by way of background, um, the BIA was formed for, uh, formed by the, um, in 2005, June of 2005, when the city council adopted ordinance 889. And it's a business-based self-imposed assessment district with assessments paid by businesses within the district for improvements and activities that support, revitalize, and attract tourists to those businesses. The assessment amounts are determined by business classification and number of full-time equivalent employees. So as was the case last fiscal year, um, due to the pandemic, the uh, proposed assessments for this year have been reduced 25%, which was the same as what they were last year, for everyone except the hotels and, and lodging establishments, and those remain reduced 50% as they were last year. Um, businesses um, can make in-lieu payments in the form of gift, gift certificates for use by the BA in normal years, but uh, we didn't have any, there were no in-lieu payments last year, and again, with the reduced assessments, there's no in-lieu um, payments this year. So as far as the assessment process, uh, we set the, uh, on June 9th, we um, presented a staff report and made the annual report available to the public and sent a hearing for tonight. The hearing was noticed in the Santa Cruz Sentinel and mailed to all the affected business owners. And the California state law, as well as our Muni code, require the city council to conduct a public hearing annually prior to approving the assessments. Um, and those assessments are submitted with an annual plan and budget for council consideration which is included in the agenda packet. And just as a reminder, there is no fiscal impact to the city. All services provided by the city are reimbursed by the BIA, um, both the public works department, as well as for work done by the finance department. Um, the, as a reminder, the BIA budget does include restricted transient tax, transient occupancy tax or TOT revenue, um, which was uh, in result of measure J, which was approved by voters in 2018. And Measure J dedicated a portion of TOT um, revenues for local business groups. And in February of 2019, the City Council directed that the TOT revenues restricted for local business groups be split evenly between the BIA and the Chamber of Commerce. And um, the kind of, if, we didn't do a reso or an ordinance, but the um, request or kind of verbal requirement was that 25% of their TOT revenues be allocated towards village improvements and or enhancements, um, that the TOT portion of the budget is the revenue as well as what those expenditures are going to be be broken out separately from the regular budget and that they provide an annual report on how the restricted TOT revenues have been used. So for uh, fiscal year 22-23, the BIA budget has uh, 32000 I think I've actually bumped that up a little. I'll have to coordinate with them on that. Um, and of that, out of the thirty-two thousand, they have programmed three thousand for direct reprinting, four thousand for miscellaneous advertising, five thousand for website management, fourteen thousand for village enhancements, and six thousand for holidays and events. The um, twenty thousand, when I went back and looked at um, council comments back in February of nineteen. It was really for the village and the 25% was really village enhancements and holiday events. So you can see they have uh, 20,000 of, of the 32 programs for that. As far as what um, assessments look like, these again are the same as last year. So these um, on the top, well, actually everything except the bottom line represents about 75% of what the assessments were prior to the pandemic. Um, again, same as last year. Hotels, motels, and inns on the bottom, that's um, half of what they were paying pre-pandemic. 
And that concludes my presentation. So um, the recommended action, as the vice mayor stated earlier, is to conduct a public hearing and adopt the proposed resolution levying the fiscal year 22-23 Capitola Village and Wharf Business Improvement Area Assessments and accepting the BIA annual plan and budget. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. And as um, again, Devin Salter, who prepared the budget for the BIA is also in the meeting. Awesome, thank you, Jim. Do we have any questions from council members? Okay, I don't see any. And uh, Devin, if you um, have a, anything you want to add now is a good time for that, I think. Uh, yes, uh, first, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. First of all, um, I apologize for not being on earlier. I, I just assumed that the council meeting started at seven and not earlier. So that's okay. <laughs> I apologize for that. Okay. Um, Karen's usually on these and uh, she asked me at the last minute if I would uh, go ahead and, and be it and be a present. Um, no, I don't, I don't really have anything to add. Just um, thank you. For, I just want to thank the city of Capitola for working with us and and all the help that Jim has given me over the, the past couple of years as treasurer to just understand more of the reports and, and how the, the income and expense thing works within the city. If you guys have any questions of me in reference to the budget, I'd be more than happy to answer those at this time. Great. Uh, Council Member Bertrand? Yeah, I'm ready for my comments now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Devin, <laughs> thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Um, so Devin, I had jumped in earlier because my scrolling was off. Um, so I read about uh, the many things that you've done. Um, I'd like to say that my daughter, when she was of that age, she loved the Easter egg hunt. And um, every time we go by, sometimes we see it if we go by the right time and kids just love it. So. Um, but my comment is about the public works and village enhancement, and I'll just read this. You may not have it in front of you. Basically, BIA contributes annually to the City of Capitola Public Works Department, and our contributions are used to help maintain the village and the wharf, sidewalk cleaning, banners, and new parking signage are part of this year's village enhancement. So I know we did the surfboard sign for the parking. I think that's an example. And I'm really glad you're working with Public Works on this. And I was just wondering if you want to expand on that and, you know, maybe some of the things that you may be planning in the future. Sure, Jacques. Um, so in regards to the village enhancements, um, or let me, let me backtrack and talk about events. Most of the events that actually happen in the village, other than the sip and strolls, um, are put on by the chamber. Um, we give a portion of our uh, money, a, a small portion uh, to the chamber to help with those events, i.e. the Easter egg hunt, surfing Santa, and some of the holiday uh, things that go on. Um, Thank you. So, and then as far as village enhancement, I know that we've agreed and we've talked with the city um, about adding some sidewalk cleaning because, I mean, honestly, once a month or once every other month just isn't enough to make it look, you know, nice or presentable to um, people that visit our area. So we will be adding, you know, sidewalk cleaning in July and August and, and September on top of what the city is paying for as well. Um, the banners are up. Um, you know, we've, we've really spent some money on our website, which we think is going to help the visitor experience a lot. Um, added, you know, uh, parking directories and that type of thing to the website. Um, also in the process of working with the city and hopefully uh, putting QR codes uh, on signs in certain areas so that people visiting the area can access that and, and you know, help them where to go, whether it be to a public restroom or what have you. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't know if that answers your question, but um, well, that expanded, it. you know, item 10, 9, and um, I, I didn't, you know, I was wondering about the Easter egg hunt. Um, the chamber does do that, but it's nice to know that you helped contribute to that. So 
Uh, thanks for you know clearing that up. Absolutely. Great. Do we have any other um, council comments? I see Councilwoman Brooks. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, is it? I'm I'm sorry. Is this questions or comments? We have moved on to comments. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. So I would just like to share a few comments then. Um, I think that the BIA has been doing a tremendous job. Um, I really love the new surfboard sign. Um, I really love all of the work that they've been doing and the commitment to the village and, and the neighboring streets. Um, I also would like to encourage the BIA to continue working um, with our police department and the Youth Action Network in their next steps to um, engage our youth during when school starts. I know that there were some issues with um, lots of students coming down into the village and leaving their bikes and causing a little uh, mayhem, if you will. Um, and so I know that they, that many of the businesses have, have been involved in troubleshooting and being creative and ideas. And I just want them to kind of encourage to, to do so because um, we have a big gap uh, with summer here and um, it more than likely will pick up when school starts in August. And so again, thank you for, for everything that you're doing and um, yeah, great work. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilwoman Brown. Thank you. I also just want to take a quick moment to commend uh, Devin and, and all the other members of the BIA uh, for the work that they've been doing. Uh, in the time that I've been the council's representative to the BIA, I've seen how hard they've worked uh, on, on things such as their website and getting people into the village, their social media. Um, um, uh, activity has has gone up quite a bit um so and their sip and stroll and their cookie walk the easter egg hunt you know during the pandemic they were really able to pivot and continue that easter egg hunt in a way uh, that allowed for the continuation of those kind of family friendly events uh in the holidays in the village so again just good work to all of you it's um i really enjoy uh attending your meetings and being the council's representative to the bia um so again i really appreciate it and um with that if it's an appropriate time uh i would like to uh, make a motion to accept the uh, cvw bia annual plan and budget i'll second that great so we have a motion by councilwoman brown and a second by council person bertrand i do just want to say that um I think having the BIA and having uh, uh, them as part of our community and being able to work amongst um, our our small town, whether it's PD, other businesses, whatnot, I think it's really important. And I am glad that uh, we can continue on. And let's take that to a roll call, please. Council member Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story is recused. Thank you. Yes. So for those that can vote, it is unanimous. So item 8A, we will, do I have to say it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good. All right, that passes unanimously, and Mayor's story is back. I'm All back. Right. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the next item, which is D. Um, and this is um, coming back to revisit our 2022-23 budget, and it's the con it's um, um, to consider the uh, next year's budget and the capital improvement program. For the city of Capitola, the recommended action is to approve the proposed resolution adopting the fiscal year 2022-23 city budget and capital improvement program. Can we have a staff report, please? Yes, Mayor Story. Thank you. Uh, give me one moment to share my screen again. Does that look okay, Larry? Thank you. 
So um, just to kind of go over the process that we went through, our proposed budget was distributed uh, April 29th. The uh, Finance Advisory Committee held meetings on May 3rd, as well as May 17th. We also did, um, one, well, it was outside of the budget, but we did one for the second home tax um, earlier this month. And then City Council held meetings on May 4th and May 19th. Those were special meetings for just budget hearings. And then at the last May 19th meeting, Council provided direction to return this evening for potential budget adoption. Um, so just to kind of go over the recap of the general fund, our operating budget is imbalanced by design. Um, and that um, goes back to the council goals that I'll cover just below here. Um, however, we are maintaining a target balance of right around 1.4 million. And in addition, we have uh, $385,000 set aside in the resiliency account. Um, the reason our budget is out of balance is we are utilizing 3.7 million of um, available general fund resources for capital improvement projects and city council goals. Those uh, I'll go over, it's been a while since we talked about these, but um, 1.5 million for the Warf rehabilitation project, 150,000 for the community center maintenance, um, universal design park, uh, 275,000, which was an increase from our last meeting. <laughs> A funding study for City Hall options, 50,000, uh, beginning to set funding aside for the Stockton Bridge reinforcement of 350K, Bluff and Cliff Drive study, 50,000, Noble Gulch Engineering Feasibility Analysis, 50,000, Fire Risk Reduction, 50,000. Um, I believe those bottom four are part of our LHMP. Um, continuing on, uh, City Hall maintenance, 100,000. We've programmed 20,000 to um, add two more EV charging stations. We have 100,000 program for bike and pedestrian safety projects, 50,000 for um, some additional Perry Park bridge maintenance. We're going to do a deposit of an additional 500,000 in our CalPERS retirement trust. And then we have some miscellaneous projects that are really staff driven, but we have 50,000 kind of set aside. There's about six or seven of those. And then again, the um, $385,000 in the resiliency account. As far as capital uh, improvement program, I'll just kind of putting up the new ones for fiscal year 22-23. Um, actually just talked about those on the previous slide, but um, City Park Design and Stockton Bridge, you can see our general fund uh, dollars. The Capitola Wharf is general fund and Measure F dollars. And that number is wrong. I apologize for that. That should be 400,000 of general fund and 1.1 million of measure F. Apologize for that. Um, the city hall maintenance community center are coming out of the facility fund and then pavement management, uh, $587,000 between our RTC measure D money and state SB1 funding. Um, I did that the wrong way. So uh, at our May 19th um, special hearing, special meeting, uh, city council direction was to increase funding for the universal um, design park by an additional 125,000, which brings us to the total of 275, to allocate 112,000 of restricted TOT revenue or funds for early childhood and youth programs, and that's 61,000 of our FY22-23 projected revenue into early childhood and youth program community grants, and then utilizing 51,000 of existing ECYP funding in the recreation division. And uh, Mickey has a plan for that listed up there, the youth program scholarships of 39,000, the swim lesson equity program for 10,000, and the job skills program for 2,000. Um, some additional budget revisions since the, our last hearing. We received um, our final Q3 for the fiscal year, which was first quarter of this calendar year, January through March sales tax revenues, and they're exceeding our, continue to exceed our estimates. We keep adjusting up and it keeps surpassing them. Um, so we have increased our beginning fund, our, our sales tax revenue for the current fiscal year by 100,000, which gives us basically an additional 100,000 to start next year with. We also, due to that, um, moved up our projection for next fiscal year by 65.5, um, taking our, and that's just the Bradley Burns 1%, that takes us up to an even 6.4 million. 
I think the most we've ever done before is about just under five nine. So that's a pretty big jump there um, since pre-pandemic. Um, on the expenditures, we uh, made 161, almost 162,000 in um, amendments, and that was increasing the universal design project by 125. I got the um, actual invoice amount from um, the Housing Action uh, Homeless Action Partnership, so that um, we moved an additional $1,525 out of general fund dollars and moved it to our uh, housing special revenue fund. So total funding now for the shelter costs is 31,525. And then we have another about 9,000 that goes towards half out of the general fund. Um, I also got received the final amounts for our JTA insurance premium. So I've decreased workers comp by 8,000, but increased liability by 46,5. Um, all of this combined uh, increased our projected ending fund balance next year by a little over $3,500. So a lot of movement to not really change much in the overall big picture. Um, just as a reminder, during our mid year, we'll be evaluating our actual sales tax revenues over the next two, two quarters and see if this performance uh, continues and if we need to make any additional amendments. We'll also, also be looking, looking at performance of other key revenue sources, but uh, TOT and cannabis tax being two of the top. TOT is doing really well, so we'll see if that one goes. And cannabis tax seems to be coming in where we originally projected. It's kind of gotten up to where we thought it would be a couple of years ago. So making sure that one is kind of holding there. Um, there is the potential to consider lease terms for the community center, hopefully by mid-year. Um, we should have an update on our federal war funding request. And then um, our projected fund balance of 1.4 plus, we can talk about the $1.4 million fund balance plus the 3D5 and resiliency account if we choose. And if any of this stuff, such as the community center or we get word on our funding request for the work come in earlier, we don't have to wait till mid year, but that's kind of just keeping our list here of things that we're tracking right now. Um, so, summary general fund is uh, structurally balanced. In the future, again, it's out of balance this year, but that's uh, intentional as we have some additional resources we're using. Um, it is structurally balanced up until the sunset of Measure F in December of 2027, which causes it to go out of balance. And our reserves remain at target levels. We're a little under this year. I think I talked about this at the last hearing um, that we're going to take kind of a two-year approach to getting them up to back up to the target. Um, uh, sales tax and TOT continue strong performance. So again, we're going to keep monitoring those and make sure that that continues. And if those start to drop off, we'll be back in front of council for sure. Or if they continue to blow up like they are, we'll be back as well. Um, expenditures, just uh, all of our, our service levels have returned to pre-pandemic levels. Um, a lot of the um, seasonal staff that we had kind of reduced during the pandemic, it's all returned. So we should uh, be seeing the same levels of service that uh, residents are accustomed to, not that I don't think it dropped off that much during the pandemic. Um, continued funding for community grant program is um, fully funded and it can, includes a combination of general fund and CDBG CD grant funding. And then um, one and three quarter vacant positions remain frozen from the onset. Um, and I don't think there's any plans on those right now. So recommended action is to approve the resolution adopting the fiscal year 2022-2023 operating budget and capital improvement program. And that completes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm not seeing any hands up from council members. So I'm gonna... <laughs> go out to the public and see if any members of the public would like to um, speak to the council about our 2022-23 budget. Okay, I guess I should tell everybody, if you want to send an email, send it to public comments at ci.capitola.ca.us. Um, yeah, Larry, if something comes in before um, uh, we conclude this item, just uh, let me know. 
Uh, but with that, I'll bring it back to council um, and, and determine the will of the council. Hopefully we'll have a budget next year. I'll move approval of staff recommendation. Oh, thank you, Councilmember Brown. Is there a second? Yeah. And second, I believe, by Vice Mayor Kaiser. Did I? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, with that, let's just go to roll call vote. I know we've, we've been working on this um, many sessions over the past few months. And so it is uh, now come to the uh, uh, final action. Um, so can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. Well, thank you. Yay, we have a budget for next year. Um, and yes, hand in hand with the budget, usually there comes a consideration of the fee schedule. Um, so which is the next uh, item on our uh, agenda. Um, the recommended action is to conduct the notice public hearing on the proposed city fee schedule for fiscal year 2022-23 and adopt the proposed resolution amending the current fee schedule. Can we have a staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor Story. Let me share my screen one last time. Does that look okay, Larry? Thank you. So um, just by, back, by way of background, um, the annual review of the fee schedule, as the mayor mentioned, is um, part of the budget process. Uh, back in November of 2015, the city council adopted the current fee schedule. And at that time, the consultant recommended an annual review and a consumer price or CPI increase. Most fees have been increased each year by the San Francisco Bay Area annual CPI. And that um, CPI rate for this year, which is we use the calendar year, so January through December of 2021 is 3.21%. And that's the increase that staff is recommending. Um, just to give a little context of what they've looked like over the last few years, um, you can see in fiscal year 18, 19, and 19, 20, they were kind of in the same range, over 3%. It was the same in 2021. However, um, that was kind of a weird, weird time because we were looking at calendar year 19 and 20 activity um, and there was a lot of recovery going on. So it was kind of a weird timing on that. So at that time, we decided not to do an increase. Um, last year, which was more representative of what was really happening during the pandemic, was 1.72, and that was what we did last year. Uh, so the, um, as I mentioned, there was a cost of service fee study back in 2015. Um, best management practices is to do that every five years. I think I've been kind of beating this drum for a couple of years now that we began this and uh, we began a fee study in January of 2020. We put the brakes on it in March of 2020. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we started it in 2020 thinking it would be ready for fiscal year 2021. But when the pandemic hit, we put the brakes on it. Um, we kicked around starting it up last year, but kind of wanted to give another year of recovery before we started adjusting fees. Um, so now at this point, we're gonna be kicking that off um, actually next week, started doing a little bit of preliminary work. And then the idea is to present results to city council later this year or early 2023, and then any adjustments, and some could go up, some could go down, any adjustments would go into effect um, July of next year. And staff is not recommending any fee amendments at this time, just simply the CPI adjustment. But I do wanna point out that um, with the approval of the permanent outdoor dining, we will be back in July once we get all of those fees kind of nailed down. We didn't want to rush through and have fees not correctly stated in the fee schedule. So we'll be bringing an amendment back in, in July with um, the outdoor dining fees. So our recommended action, as the mayor stated, is to conduct the notice public hearing and adopt the resolution adopting the fee schedule for fiscal year 22-23 and adopting the animal service fees as set by Santa Cruz County. 
And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes, yeah, Jim, um, just one clarifying question. We're increasing it. It the base of what by one point, whatever the pre that first screen was, what's the actual what what are we getting from to and to that's all of the all of the fees that are within the schedule would have a CPI increase of um, 3.21%. Okay, and last year was the 1.7, got it. Correct, I kind got of, it. I strung that all together, sorry. I see, okay, and then this increase by 3.21% goes into effect of July, 2023? No, July of this year. Okay, and what did you say goes into effect of July, 2023? The plan After is- the report? Yeah, the plan is to do the fee study kind of into this fall and early next okay. year and be queued up for next July. Okay. I'm tracking. I gotcha. Thanks. Sure. Are there other questions from council members? Okay, I'm going to uh, go out to the public. I see that there are no attendees um, in the Zoom application. I'll just check. Larry, are there any emails from members of the public um, on this item? Okay, with that, I'm going to um, bring it back um, for um, uh, a motion. Councilmember Brooks. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed resolution adopting the, um, oops, wrong one, everybody, hold on. There it is. As uh, a motion to conduct the notice public hearing on the proposed city fee schedule for fiscal year 22-23 and adopt the proposed resolution amending the current fee schedule. I can second that. The second by Vice Mayor Kaiser. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Hi. Mayor Story. Hi. Thank you. And that brings us to item 8F. And that item um, is to approve the proposed resolution authorizing the fiscal year 2022-23 annual salary adjustment consistent with existing employee labor agreements. And as a uh, Part of the introduction to that item it is my job to, uh, as mayor, to make the final following announcement to before the city council this evening as part of agenda item 8F is a recommendation to approve the updated salary schedule for 2022-23 for employees, including at-will management employees. At-will management employees consists of department heads and city manager. Effective July 10th, 2022, the cost of living increase for the at will employees will be 2.75%. In addition, city health contributions for at will management employees will increase by $25 per month, effective July 10th, 2022. And can we go on with the um, rest of the staff report on this item?
Seeing no questions, I'll just ask if, um, um, Larry, are there any emails um, from members of the public? If members of the public would like to send an email, you can send it to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Okay, I'll bring it back for uh, council action. Is there a motion? Yes, I can make a motion to take um, approve the resolution authorizing the fiscal year 22-23 annual salary adjustment consistent with existing employee labor agreements. I'll second. Okay, there was a motion by Vice Mayor Kaiser, seconded by Council Member Brown. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And that motion passes unanimously. And which brings us to item nine, which is adjournment for the evening. Thank you everyone um, for your attention and your work this evening uh, with the city's business. Um, I will adjourn uh, this meeting um, in, to our next uh, scheduled meeting, uh, which will not be until July the 28th, 2022 uh, at 7 p.m. Um, we are on our summer break. Um, so there won't be an early July meeting. Everybody have a great uh, summer break. Until then, but be sure to come back um, safe and sound on July the 28th. Um, and we will see you then. And um, as I always end, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Um, and good night, Capitola. Good night. Thank you.